Let's go. Hello, we are now on part two of our learning Kipper journey. We have learned the meanings of our cards. And now our next step is to understand what their um, directional cues are, if you like. It is all in my book, of course. If you have a copy, you can follow through as I talk about the cards now. The Kipper cards are very unique in their reading system they you will hear everybody saying directional 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 yes the majority of readers in the english community are actually only reading directional from the people but actually the whole deck is a directional deck and we follow the grand tableau uh, the grosse tafel as a snakes and ladders board if you like or a movie board of somebody's life and the movement takes you into different places it's not just a linear read we do read in different directions and not just based on the main characters so we're going to take a look at the cards in their very uniqueness and discuss exactly what that means. So of course we'll start with the people cards. The people cards are our main characters and of course we all now know that um, what is in front of our main characters is auspicious and what's behind their backs is inauspicious. What does that mean? That means that they are, they can handle the things in front better than they can handle the things behind. Um, the items or cards that come behind their back are ones that we can say troublesome. It doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be troublesome. They can just be, bit of a harder pill to swallow if you like doesn't mean they can't get it or doesn't mean that they can't manage it it just means it may be hard, more hard work than usual we of course have our family tree we have our older generation again in front auspicious behind inauspicious then we have our main characters and then of course our lovely rich lady, rich girl and rich gent. The, all of these have forward is auspicious and behind is inauspicious. So they are directional cards meaning only the auspicious inauspicious placements. Again, excuse me, infant is the same. So infant falls into the same category. As a people card. The next cards we're going to look at are our connectors. The connectors, we have four connectors in the Kipper deck. We have state of marriage, we have convene, we have court official and short illness. These are the cards that connect a storyline. So if you have a short illness, in your storyline and two cards either side will explain the short illness further so it is a joining together of a storyline if you get four connecting cards nearby this is a whole process going on that you should keep an eye out for so our connectors connecting the cards either side of them we have cause and effect we also have different movement cards I've split them down into specific areas so we can focus on them. Um, cause and effect, the card here to the left of Gloomy Thoughts, to, sorry, <laughs> to your left, no, to the right of Gloomy Thoughts is the cause of the Gloomy Thoughts and the card at this side will show what is affected by those Gloomy Thoughts. Similarly with our expectation, desire, where the desire comes from or the cause of the desire at this side and what they are focusing on or what the desire will affect on the other side. 
and again with sad news. Sad news shows behind her back the cause of the sad news and in front of her what will be affected by the sad news. Whew. Let's move on to our movement cards because these are very particular in the Kipper. My deck is directionally exact replica of the 1890 deck, so the very original first Kipper deck. The directions you will see on mine are the same as what's in there. A change. A change shows movement. So we have this is being changed and it will change into the card at this side. So we see a movement running from here through to the next card. So you can see what is being changed, when the main change will occur, and how or what is affected by that, or what the change will mean to the querent. Similarly, the journey card. The journey card runs from the two cards beneath, so that will show you the source of the journey, the source of the experience, the start of the journey, and it moves on up and then we see then the outcome of the journey or where the end destination is if you like up in the corner nice i like the journey card i like the book on the journey card so a gift a gift is a vertical card we see a gift coming down from above down to below. You'll actually appreciate this more if you see a grand tableau. Imagine the 36 cards laid out and the storyline running from the top down to the card below. That's not exactly um, how people will have told you to read a GT. This is the Bavarian uh, reading of a GT. It is a very flowing, moving GT. So we're looking for the whole storyline here from above to below. What is being gifted? From whom is it being gifted? And how does it... Um, how is the gift given? Who is the gift given to, perhaps, who would see below? So we'll see a flow through the GT from top to below. And a long way, our long distance, long card. Everything takes a long time when this comes up. It is again a movement card, but it is very slow movement card. Some people believe, or some readers believe, that the um, card below, then moving over here, that the distance between this happening and this happening is two years or at least two years. I personally read this card obviously as a long time, a long distance, a long way. It can also, um, if it's in the last row of a, sorry, column of a spread of a full GT, if it's in the last column, you can see a status quo for that GT in the Quenant's life for another two years coming. So if it does land in the last line for your Quarant, whether that be male or female, make a mental note that this could be a status quo. This could be a GT that will, the outcome, the end column will actually show the coming two years status quo for your querent. So now we have our exceptional cards or our cards that they do fall into a um, category but they have a very special way of dealing with them. And that is our theft card, our fatality card, and our dishonest person card. So 24 theft, leave those there for a moment. The theft is being stolen from this card and it's being given to this card. So imagine someone coming in your house, taking whatever sat at this side, and then putting it onto the card that sat at the opposite side. So we have a movement, it's also a, well yeah, we do have a movement from taking, so something has been lost at this side, and it has been placed at this side. So it is a, um, it can be 
deemed as a cause and effect, but it's very specific to loss. So it is very uh, specific to its own category, if you like, of stealing from this side, the loss being felt, and then it's being applied or affecting the card to this side. And then we have our dishonest person who, how many times do I have to say is rarely a person, only if you see a person in the vicinity is it a person. This is dishonesty, wrongness. And she has a door behind her. And behind the door, the card to this side, that's what's hidden. That's what's dishonest. That's what you don't know. That's what the querent doesn't know quite yet and it will have the biggest impact on the card to this side so the dishonesty or the wrongness or what the querent doesn't know lays to this side of the card and how it impacts on the querent's life falls at this side so watch out for a person at this side of the door doesn't mean that they're a wrongdoer in any way. Sometimes we will see a person sitting behind the door. For example, we have a rich girl here and it could be that she's presenting a false impression of herself to the world. Um, so don't automatically think that this person is a, a wrongdoer. There is something wrong in the situation, but you need to, sorry I got a message, you need to find out what that is afterwards. And then our lovely fatality card. Fatality sometimes makes our readers bang their head against the wall until they actually understand the placements. So what do the placements mean? We have um, the most important placement is down in this corner. And this will show you what is ended. This is the card that is ended in this position, it would mean that the wrongness is ended now. So that's the usually what the querent wants to know. When they see fatality come out, they usually want to know what is it? What is it that's going to end? Then you look down in this corner. The cause of the end starts here. This is affected by the end. And remember the one with low is the one that's ended. The one that will, the card that will receive the highest impact of that end is here above. So whatever falls above fatality will be the most affected. So yes, we have cause of fatality. We have the group, the fatality actually happening. Then we have what is affected. This above will receive the biggest impact of that. The card down to the bottom is what's being ended. And then the card below is what's being transformed. So we're actually looking at a transformation. You will notice a lot of people in the card reading community, especially the normal readers, will use coffin as a transformation or um, something that sounds a lot more positive than an end. Actually, these cards, Fatality Coffin 2, is an ending. It is going through the process of that ending. Maybe something will transform afterwards, but you first need to suffer that end or deal with that end before the rest can actually happen. The transformation, if you like. So again, the most important card on this one is the one to the bottom so we can actually see what is being ended. And then we have our stop cards. Lovely, lovely stop cards. These are actually the most important cards, if you like, in the deck, because these actually put punctuation on your read. We're not talking um, just reading card by card here, we're reading a sentence and then a full stop. So we're seeing the culmination of a storyline being ended by a stop card. The <coughs> movement too 
we can tell if a uh, situation is a long-winded situation with the other cards or if it is a stalled, stunted situation with our stops. So we have a letter is a stop card, win-loss is a stop card, good outcome is a stop card, his thoughts is a stop card, I'm going to leave him out because we're going to talk about him again. Sorrow we stop at, house we stop at, living room, military person, I'm going to leave him to the side, I'm sure you all, if you've read my book, you know why, court is a stop card, high honours is a stop card, great fortune is a stop card, 27, unexpected money, 29, prison, 34, work, Ultimate stop card, 36, hold great water, getting where you want to be. So the three stop, do it on the floor. The three stop cards that I have actually pulled out here are because there are, they are stop cards, they do stop your read, but they can give you a little bit more information than a plain stop card. His thoughts, for example, has a cupid in the corner. The card that lies diagonal above will show you what his thoughts are. They will show you what the plans are. They will show you how romantic he is. So you can look to one card above to get that answer. You don't have to. It's choice. The next stop card is Great Fortune. She obviously shines a light to all the cards around. She is positive, beautiful energy, spreading out across your spread, making your negative cards feel less worrisome. She will help you, bit of hand in there to help you on your way. The um, She is a stop card. The card to her left is the card that receives the most great fortune. So we see her in this position, then his thoughts would receive the most great fortune. But she's a stop card and she does throw great fortune on all the cards that touch her. But mostly she favors this one. So it's like she throws it in that direction, if you like, and then it spreads all around. So the final one, our lovely military person, he is a stop card. His, um, the only time we will use him is if we want to see what needs to stop or what we need to put an end to. Sorry, what we need to um, say that's enough with or get under our thumb, if you like, get in control of is the card beneath where his sword is pointing to. So that will be a particular piece of information that you can pull out if you like, but he still does stop the read. I can put a list in the comments of all the cards and their super duperness, their specialness, what the directional cue tells you. Um, and just keep kippering. Make sure you comment on what you find particularly challenging with kipper. Comment what you would like me to teach you along the way or help you along the way with your kipper cards. It can be anything that's really causing a military person moment, if you like, where um, the stop comes and you think, hmm, what do I do next? Put it in the comments, let me know, and yeah, just let me know what your feelings are on the Kipper cards, what you want to learn next, and let's do it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Comment, subscribe, and like. Bye.